ai suruni honjaino kiyo daishe mai shaste sheju kara mazua yokoyama sensai to paksa usasoi tadaki arikato gozaima from now on i will be speaking in english i have no financial or any other disclosures to make about my following presentation I have very fond memories of my last two visits to Japan when in 2005 I traveled to Okayama and at the same time I also visited Hiroshima on board a Shinkansen the second photo where the lady is stopping me to choose dishes as I had already requested her for my vegetarian preferences but for the corona epidemic i would have flown more than 20 hours and over 5600 kilometers from lucknow which is the capital city of one of the largest state in the northeast of india and that is about 45 minutes flying distance from india's capital new delhi it would seem ironical for the title of my lecture which is the role of using technology for e education and health if i had come all the way flying from lucknow to fukushima in the first week of march so despite having to miss you all in person and visit your country that is full of beauty and very good people i am happy to deliver my lecture using technology that i am going to propose for the coming times by the technology i mean the use of telemedicine as a mode for teaching treating and training for skill transfer before moving on further i would like to show you the photograph of our institute building this building is spaced in 650 hectares of land at the outskirts of lucknow city it was established by japanese technical grants in 80s trees planted to commemorate the 5 years of this cooperation between jica and government of india are now large and provide shadows to us and we go to our outpatient building from the academic offices these are some of the photographs of the indo japanese team who stationed themselves in lucknow for 3 years and helped to build our prestigious institution today the testimony of jica and indian collaboration is matured at 40 years of age i recall fondly the visit of dr park 4 years ago in 2016 when as the organizing secretary of our 64th national meeting i invited him and offered collaboration for teaching and skill mentoring through his innovative gadgets and the use of existing telemedicine facilities at our institute but as the founder of one of the oldest and most famous hollywood studios sam meyer has once said predicting the future is fraught with lot of risk for example British physicist Lord Kelvin one of the foremost and innovative scientists of his generation a man unafraid to take repeated risks of imagination and endeavor who rose to the presidency of the Royal Society of Science destined himself to a regrettable immortality by his failed predictions when he said x-rays will prove to be a hoax and radio has no future today This lecture is being delivered using a variety of electromagnetic radio waves as we all know at the other side of the coin when the british medical journal editorial by richard smith quoted a bohemian austrian poet and novelist rainer maria rilke rilke is widely recognized as one of the most intensely lyrical german language poet none of his predictions as leisurely society paperless office death of the novel has happened yet and there are things which were never predicted but have happened and have changed the world forever for example end of communism spread of internet 911 and 2611 at mumbai india so with all that i have shown you and i have experienced myself i have come to realize what sir bernard shaw said once the future belongs to unreasonable ones the one who look forward not backward who are certain only of uncertainty and those who have the ability and the confidence to think 
completely differently. In, due to the corona pandemic, the world has changed for a predictable future. I and my spouse were ready to travel to Fukushima three days before and done our shopping to present gifts to our wonderful Japanese friends. And three days later, when I got an email from the conference office that the conference is postponed indefinitely, I am sure some of you will agree with me about the nature of what has happened has taught us by Lord Buddha more than 3,500 years ago when he said that there is only one thing in the entire universe which is constant. That is, nothing stays the same and that the change is constant. I am sure these times will also pass and we all will while reminding ourselves of the Lord Buddha's teaching, adapt to the changed scenario in our work environment. All agree on one thing, based on the quantum theory as well as Lord Buddha's teaching, that change is the only thing that is constant. In the next 15 minutes, I shall elaborate on the possible role of internet and communication technologies in cardiac care and education, what I have been able to do in India, and what EBM JSCVS and SGPGI at Lucknow together can offer to the countries in India and the subcontinent. It is quite evident, without giving you some philosophical examples in the current circumstances, I cannot quote a better example than this, which has forced us to use the technology and create a new behavior of the society for the times to come. However, we must also keep in mind another aspect that Mr. Ian Morrison, the former president of the Institute of the Future, in his wonderful book entitled The Second Curve has mentioned that this we must not both overestimate the effect of short-term and underestimate the effect of long-term changes. In the current context, his statement only testifies the teaching of Buddha on the importance of omnipotent constant of change. Even today's changed scenario if I pick your thoughts on the experience with the use of technology, your responses will not differ much based on whether you are a medical student, cardiac trainee or a mentoring teacher. Most students will reply, at least before the corona pandemic, they neither had any interest nor they had any time taken any online classes. All that they have used the technology for is for typing reports and reading papers and textbooks. And if some trainee was replying to the same question, then his typical response would be a little more mature, who may admit that technology was hardly of practical use to them over and above for what it was for them as a student. And lastly, if I had asked the same question to a teacher faculty, here, instead of giving you a hypothetical reply, I would tell you my personal experience Despite my imploring in India and all over the world on every forum that I had an opportunity to promote the use of technology in teaching, training of skill and even proposing India's first total web-based conference in the Telemedicine Society of India, of which I was the honorary secretary, I failed to generate any enthusiasm or support. Even my good friend Dr. Park has only now after a period of four years started following the recent uh, corona pandemic, seriously delve into this modality of training. However, I congratulate him for doing this and using the technology to its best for training the students in the Asian sector. Today, India is the fifth largest economy in the world and second most populous country after China. 50 percent of 1.38 billion people are below the age of 25 years and more than 65 years are around 35 years of age. So India is one of the youngest countries in the world. The average ages of the population of China, India and Japan points to a significant situation that is inequality and achievements in health and economical areas. India at this crossroads is feeling significant pain of rural and urban epidemiological distribution of non-communicable diseases, especially heart diseases in India, as they have 
in most of the industrialized nations. Ever increasing gap of the burden of requirement versus availability has reached such an alarming proportion that almost 65% of the 1.38 billion Indian citizens are living in complete or partial subsidies from the federal or state governments. These subsidies are collected through enormous tax burden on less than 5% middle income population and indirect taxes on almost everyone including those who live on subsidies. Good medical care is so expensive and sparse that it has become a major driver of poverty. It encourages because of that non-compliance, delayed treatment and that needs to be fought on a war footing now. In the circumstances so full of gloom and doom, there are efforts which are being made by many and perhaps that is the reason that despite despicable wealth, education and healthcare inequality, the country is achieving successes on many formidable milestones. The red oval space on India's map is the catchment area of our institution in Lucknow. It covers almost 20% of the population of the country. In the year 2000, when I returned from UK and joined at Lucknow, much of the area of the state, that is the two-third of the entire state, did not have the facility of cardiovascular surgery except at SGPGI. For 123 million population to be covered adequately for cardiovascular care by a single unit that performed at that time less than 450 surgeries a year was hardly satisfactory. The number of deaths caused by non-compliance of treatment and regular follow-up were around 38-40% to 40 every year. Some of the factors responsible were poverty, due to which patient could not travel long distances, and lack of centers equipped with adequate facilities. In the month of July 2005, I decided to go to six places on every weekend physically with a team of technicians and equipment for on-site free INR, ECG and echocardiography, which covered the leftover two-third part of the state. This was indeed very tiresome and expensive, at the same time a resource-intensive exercise, but our follow-up improved and mortality fell down significantly. A couple of years later, mobile technology made its way in India. Soon, it became a household item due to its low cost and wider penetration. Today, in 2020, India has nearly 850 million mobile subscriber, of which two-thirds are using fast 3G and 4G internet on their handheld devices. Once going to the OPD, in 2007, I took a picture of patients waiting in my outpatient. You can see almost everyone had a mobile device. From then onward, I started using internet and communication technology for patient care using short messaging services and WhatsApp services. I did not know then, but this is what is called now the mobile telemedicine. We all know the three components of medical education those are teaching, training, which includes techniques of diagnosis and treatment interventions and for furthering new knowledge through the frontline basic and translational researches. Meet these ends. In the next few slides, I will show you my experience on the use of social media and teaching and training in cardiac surgery. This was perhaps the first in the world experience. This was the time when the Facebook was gaining popularity as a platform which was free and with very little technological requirements by the users. I therefore created several Facebook groups covering almost the entire spectrum of cardiac surgery subjects and team members. For surgeons, the name of the group was Cardiac Surgeons in India, in short CSII. Today, this has over 1100 cardiac surgeons and trainees from India and some invited international surgeons, anesthetists and cardiologists. These surgeons and trainees regularly exchange their queries, experiences and recorded operative achievements and learn from each other. 
it is my dream to share live surgeries with live interactions by the students and the expert surgeons in this private group hopefully it will be fulfilled soon other groups are valve repair group for students and senior surgeon with select interest then there is a group for students and young surgeons who have select but vast experience in minimal invasive cardiac surgery and a group of perfusionists technicians and nurses finally there is a group for global and international community of cardiac surgeons a notable feature of all these groups which is common to all is that they are all private groups and therefore not open for viewing by lay people for obvious reasons membership is either through proper verification by recommending colleagues or with the help of an online questionnaire Finally I created a website which is dedicated to open learning for cardiac surgeons and students this website apart from up to date teaching material also has a open journal which publishes free case reports experience and papers philosophy of accepting publication is not by selective bias of anyone but the tagline is each experience is worth publishing as every experience teaches us something to save a life or making someone worthy to save a life in the future if you ask me about my personal experience with ICT i would say it has been mixed one but i am very confident that it is going to be the main delivery method of information teaching and skill transfer in the future this has been amply verified by the current corona epidemic as an administrator and head of the department i must be frank to admit that i have had my fair share of failures during a long career as a telemedicine and teleeducator enthusiast challenges remain as they were 6 years ago when i delivered my lecture on content development and my experience in online teaching and learning of students and young surgeons however future holds promise through the use of live 3d and virtual reality based simulation skill training and very soon the fusion imaging technology of ct mr and pet fusion will improve our diagnosis manifold and amalgamation of the artificial intelligence for on site and remote teaching and cardiac healthcare are not going to be just the imaginary possibilities but realistic possibility within the next 2 to 3 years we shall see a lot of training and operative skill transfer not in these conventional operating suits but in remotely controlled environment not within the same room or premises but perhaps between fukushima and lucknow in remotely controlled environment not within the same room or premises but perhaps between different countries like fukushima and lucknow in india for future i propose that we should try to create a possibility of twice a week didactic teaching on the learning channel by the best teachers from all the continents to take live online classes once a week on demand webcast of theoretical subject or operative procedure we should also create a live channel from operative rooms from across the country and between many other countries we should also try to hold a monthly cme and assignments for the students and like i have already done that each country should have a free and open publication and thesis held for their students for the skill training in indian subcontinent i would like to propose to the japanese society of cardiovascular surgeons and remind my friend dr park at abm to try to establish a possibility of skill training using his resources and the national resource center of school of telemedicine and bioinformatics and our department as soon as possible things are changing and they will not stop changing as someone has said rightly if you think that you can run an organization in the next 10 years as you have run it in the last 10 years you are out of your mind let us all make c1 do one and teach everyone in the big family of cardiac healthcare and 
teaching fraternity across if not the world then at least the mighty and rising asia i thank you everyone for the patient listening for an opportunity to call me to give this lecture and i welcome any question remember there is no question that is stupid to ask thank you very much